from Pat? Yeah. Boy, she sure must be crazy about you, Mick. That's the second one she's written, and she's only been up at that dude ranch a week. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, what are you so glum about? Isn't she having a good time? Yeah, she, she, she's having a wonderful time. Well, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, but the first letter she wrote was all about her and me, and this was about her and me and him. Him? <laughs> Who's him? Big hunk of handsome man called Rusty. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's the way it struck me, too. Let me read this to you here. Dear Mickey, just a few lines to tell you what a wonderful time I am having here at the Happy Cactus Dude Ranch. Nevada's a beautiful state. Yesterday, I met the foreman. He's a tall, handsome hunk of man named Rusty. Tall and handsome? Yeah. I miss you, Mickey. Rusty is a marvelous dancer. You would love it up here in the wide open spaces. Last night, when Rusty took me for a moonlight ride, I thought of you. Moonlight ride? <laughs> He is a champion bronc buster, you know. I wish you were here to enjoy the barbecues we have every night under the stars. He is six feet two and a half. Six feet two and a half. I have so much more to tell you, but it must wait for my next letter. Rusty has just come in to take me to the square dance. He is standing behind me as I write this to you and pestering me to hurry up. So goodbye for now. Lots of... Of love, 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 my love. It, it's scribbled there, though. Yeah, it's scrawled. Yeah. Oh, sure is. Gosh, her handwriting was all right, Freddie, right up to love there. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? What? What does that mean? Well, don't be so naive, Mick. Huh? You really want to know why Pat's handwriting suddenly went berserk? Yeah. Yeah, I want to know. What is it? What is well, it? Well, I'll tell you. Well, tell me. Look. You pretend like you're Pat, yeah. writing to you, yeah. and I'll be the handsome cowboy coming through the door. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I... Go, go ahead. Yeah, you I'll pretend like you're Pat. Yeah, I'll do it. We'll, we'll find out what happened here. Uh, I have so much more to tell you, but it must wait for my next letter. Rusty has just come in to take me to the square day. Howdy, Pat. Yes, Danny. Right. How's my little filly? Now, now Rusty, you just leave me alone. I'm writing to Mickey Mulligan. He's standing behind me as I write this and is pestering me to hurry up. Come on, gal. I, we'll be late for the square uh, dance. Rusty, don't hurry me at all. I'm writing to my loved one, Mickey Mulligan. That little punk. Little punk. Uh, <laughs> you well, no, wish you were half as much a man. So goodbye for now and lots Come on, of gal. love. Let's go wait to the love. Wait a minute. Love, love. Hey, now look at it. Huh? It's scrawl, right? Well, of course it's scrawl, Freddie. You didn't give me a chance to finish it. But did he give Pat a chance? Buck up, old man. There are other fish in the sea. <laughs> you may go fishing, Freddy, but I have other plans. Let me see now. You took off next Christmas last Friday. <laughs> last month, you took off three Fourth of Julys in a row. Shall I go on? What about my Thanksgivings? <laughs> as far as you're concerned... Thanksgiving is a thing of the past. I wish I could help you, but you just have to stay on the job. Chin up. Oh, Mr. Brown, I, I was wondering if you... Oh, could... you're worrying about Pat, aren't you? Well, what? stop worrying. She's having a wonderful time on her vacation. I got a card from her this morning. Yeah, let me read it to you. you did. Dear Mr. Brown, having a wonderful time, wish you were here. This weekend, we are having a Pioneer Day celebration in town. And guess what? I have been elected Queen of the Rodeo. I'm so excited. I owe it all to Rusty. Miss you all. And I can't read that last line. She must have been in a hurry. <laughs> it's, that, it's that Rusty again. I wonder who Rusty is. Look, M M Mr. Brown, uh, don't you think that you need Pat back here at the office? After all, you've got a lot of work for her, and I know that you'd, you could use her around here. Had Pat cut her vacation short, I wouldn't think of it. She's worked hard, and she's entitled to her rest. I'm not a slave driver. One thing I insist on is that no employee of mine shall ever be so overworked that it might endanger his health. Might endanger his health? That's right. Yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Brown. Oh. Something wrong? Uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I, I, I'm just a little overworked, Mr. Brown. That's all. I got a little dizzy. The room started to spin, but it's nothing to get concerned about. Have you had these spells before? Oh, yes. They've just been coming every two minutes, and they last about four or five minutes. <laughs> all right. All right. You win. Huh? I think you should have a few days off to get your health back. Do you really mean it, Mr. Brown? Of course I mean it. Gosh, thank you, sir. 
Yes, a change of scenery would do me some good. May I suggest the Happy Cactus Dude Ranch in Nevada? You certainly can, sir. Who's going to work for me, though, while I'm gone? Oh, I'll ask Freddie Devlin to take over for you. He shouldn't object to working a few hours overtime for his old friend. Yes, what is it? Oh. Dizzy spells. Must have caught it from me. Yes, Fred. Maybe need a little vacation, too. Do you think I'm improving any in my riding? Just great, Pat. Well, you're going to look like a genuine cowgirl riding at the head of that parade. Oh, gee, just wait till I write Mickey about it. I bet he doesn't believe it. Hold on, gal. I ain't giving you time to write anything to anybody. Now, Rusty, shall we go in and have an ice cream soda? Do you think they know what that is? <laughs> I can't help feeling a little conspicuous. Stop worrying, will you? When it comes to cowboys, we look like the real McCoy. Oh, boy, these saddles sure are heavy. Yeah, maybe if we hadn't spent so much money on these outfits, we'd have had enough left over to rent some horses, too. What good would horses do us? We don't have any riding licenses. Riding li... Freddie, you don't need a license to ride a horse. You need a permit. Well, that's fine, Pat. If it's a cowboy she wants, it's a cowboy she'll be a get. <laughs> Oh, oh, these boots are killing me. Don't they have any low-heeled ones? Quit complaining, will you? You're... What was that, coyote? Ah, oh, it's just that horse over there. Boy, oh, they're big ones. Yeah, I guess taking those pony rides at that little track was a waste of time. Hey, what's going on? Maybe they know we're padding. Now, wait a minute. Look, Fred, we're not going to take these saddles inside with us. What, do you want them to think we're dudes or something? Well, what do we do with them? We'll put them down here. That's all. Before we go in there, we don't want those fellows in there to think we're from the city. Let's check our expressions and our bow legs, huh? Buddy, check. Now we'll check our draws. Ready? Draw! Butter fingers. Yeah, well, all right, so I was a little careless. I'd already shot my man. Don't worry, nobody's gonna shove us around. What's the matter? Don't you believe in the code of the West? He better not get a hankering to push me too far. Hey, Mick. What happened? You're going to have to be more careful. Hey, Mick. I just spotted her. Come on. Wait a minute. She might think we're chasing her. Now we'll just stamble over to the bar there. Like nonchalant, just like nothing. Don't look now. The bus from Pomona's in. Howdy. 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 What part of Hollywood are you fellas from? Hollywood? Stranger, we just blew in from Wyoming. Well, men are men. And women are women. And horses are horses. And cows are cows. And, uh... Where do you fellas fit in? <laughs> Enough of this chit-chat, my partner and I. We've just had a tough ride, ain't we? Yeah. That bus was very crowded. Now, all the way from Pomona. Now, I've got a hankering to quench my thirst. What's the strongest kind of drink you got? Cherry pop. Cherry pop. Don't you have any red eye? I hear all the cowboys drink that. Yeah, red eye. Sure we got red eye. That's cherry pop with a dash of lemon. Boy, the, the West sure has come unglued. Straws? Well, no thanks. We can handle our own drink, partner. Hey, Freddy. Freddy, look at her over there. Eating her heart out. And then he fished him right over the corral fence. <laughs> hey, Rusty. Get a load of what just crawled out from under the woodwork. Oh, brother. Some dick shy a couple of jokers. Mickey! It's hey, Freddy! Howdy! Well, 
Howdy, stranger. Oh, Christy, this is Mickey Mulligan Hi, and Teddy right Devlin. Hi. Thank you, Fletcher. Uh, here, Mickey, take my chair. No, no, it's oh, all right. Go ahead. ahead. Thank you. Oh, what a wonderful surprise, but how did you get off from work? Well, I was just lucky. I found a Labor Day weekend in 1963 I hadn't used yet. <laughs> well, you and, and Freddie picked a wonderful time to come up. Tonight is the barbecue and square dance. Oh. Hey, you fellows better start scrounging around for dates. Most of the pretty gals are already taken. And tomorrow afternoon, we're having the championship rodeo. We're all rooting for Rusty to win the bronc busting contest. Rusty's a champion bronc buster, rated 10th in the United States. Do you ride, Mickey? Ride? Oh, yes, I ride a little. A little? <gasps> Get in. Always the modest guy. Why, he was born in the saddle. He, he, he learned how to ride before he could walk. No kidding. Oh, Mickey, you never told me that. Well, I... Uh, you see, it's just like I said. Modest. Why, only this morning he said to me, Freddie, don't let anybody know I once won the bronc busting championship of Catalina Island. Catalina Island? You mean they have horses there? Do they ever? Why, some of the wildest Bronx in the world are raised on that island. Some of them are man-eaters. I, uh, I'd rather you not talk about it, Fred. You see what I mean? Modest. Well, Mickey, why didn't you ever tell me this? Well, it was just a part of my past that I've been trying to forget, Pat. Say, Mickey, this is an honor having a rider like you up here. Maybe the rodeo committee can talk you into entering the Bronx busting contest tomorrow. Ah, but would that be wise? He's liable to show you up, Rusty. Oh, don't worry about me. I like stiff competition. You know, you like... Well, I... Thanks, but I, I never do anything in any contest without discussing it with my manager. Uh, can I talk to you for a moment, uh, manager? Excuse us. Uh, what are you trying to do, get me killed? <laughs> I was on a horse. It was when I was three years old. I was having my picture taken on a pony. And even then, my mom and pop had to get three neighbors to help hold me on. Look, Mick, what did we come up here in the first place for? To win Pat away from that cowboy, right? Right. Now, you gotta make Pat think that you're just as good as he is. Maybe even better. Yeah. Now, he's a bronc buster, right? Right. So you gotta be a better bronc buster. Yeah. But you didn't have to tell him I was born in the saddle. You know where I was born. I was born in the backseat of a taxi. <laughs> the meter running. Ah. Ah, but they don't know that. And they don't know that you can't ride a Bronx either. But the Bronx know it, and that's all that counts. I tell you, Freddie, I'm not going to enter any rodeo. Well, of course you're not. I wouldn't let you go that far. What's the matter with you? You wouldn't. This is just a build-up to impress Pat. Oh! Don't worry. When the time comes for you to ride, I'll think of something. Thanks, Fred. So don't worry. No, I won't. I won't. Let's get back to the table. Right, right. <laughs> Well, what's the verdict? Well, it looks like you're going to have all the competition you can use in the bronc busting contest. Oh, well, Mickey, are you sure? Now, enough? don't you worry, Pat. Freddie knows what I'm doing. <laughs> Best of luck, Mickey. Thanks. The Rodale. The Rodale. Rodale. Howdy, ma'am. I guess you'll be the new school mom. Oh, Mickey Mulligan, the West has certainly gotten into your blood. Oh, shucks, weren't nothing. Why don't you sit up here on the rail for a spell and let me sing you one of my new Western ballads? Ah, oh, it's a mighty pretty evening, huh? Oh, well, the moon is beautiful. Yes, it is pretty. Uh, tonight, but not half as pretty as you. Why, hogs, head, and hominy, you ain't as, as pretty as a speckled calf underneath a... A red wagon. Is that good? Oh, that's that's the best in the West. That's what it is. You know, before I went to work for the network, I used to work for some of the biggest spreads in the country. There wasn't anything I couldn't do on the range. Rope, ride, brand. You know, some folks are born with it. Some folks are born without it. I guess I was just born with it. Mickey, are you jealous of Rusty? Jealous? Me jealous? Well, don't be silly. Then why the cowboy act? Act? Why, well, being a cowboy is as natural to me as, as, as falling off a log. Well, there's one thing I want understood. No cowboy can ever take the place of a certain city slicker named Mickey Mulligan. Do you mean that, Pat? 
Well, didn't I leave a champion rodeo rider stranded at a square dance to sneak out here and be with you? You sure did. Gosh, you, you don't know how good that makes me feel. Mickey, do me a favor. Sure, anything. Don't ride in the bronc busting contest tomorrow, please. All right, anything for you, Pat. Where'd you get that little pin you're wearing? Oh, that's a silver saddle Rusty won at the Cheyenne Rodeo. I'm riding in the Rodeo tomorrow. <laughs> you promised. That was before I saw that pin. You tell that Rusty that he's never seen Bronc Bust until he sees Mickey Mulligan come flying out of that chute. Oh, Mickey, you're so stubborn. If that's the way you feel, I'm going back to the square dance. Huh. Now, listen, Pat, you better tell him to beware of his laurels. The way I feel now, nothing could throw me. But the bronc riding contest goes on this afternoon, and Mickey's determined to go through with it. But Michael's never been on a horse before in his life. Pat, you've got to stop him. Well, Mrs. Mulligan, I tried to stop him. But, well, he's made up his mind to prove to everyone he's a real cowboy. Oh, I'm afraid something horrible will happen to Mickey if he tries to ride a bronc. Oh, good heavens, I'll call Joe at the precinct, and we'll try to get on the next plane. Well, please hurry. I only hope there's enough time to stop him from riding. Goodbye. Rusty, listen, Freddie, have you thought of a way to get me out of this thing yet? Don't worry, Mick. I'll think of something. <laughs> and a boy, Rusty, hang on, boy! <laughs> well, 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 concentrate, because I've got to ride next. I'm not sure about this horse. I don't think he likes me, and I'm not even on his back yet. Go, Rusty! <laughs> To it, Mick. Just do like Rusty's doing. Hang on and wave your hat. Oh, wow, he really bit the dust that time. He bit, he bit the dirt. Is, is, is he dead? No, no. Look, he's getting up just like nothing happened. Here's the official time for Rusty Evans. 25 and a half seconds. Looks like a record ride. I think of something, Freddy. Rusty? Yeah, it was a great ride. Probably nothing compared to what you'll do, Mickey. Good luck. Freddy. I Let's... got it, Mick. You have? Why don't you? Yeah. Oh, no. No? No, it wouldn't work. But don't worry, I'll think of something. Gosh. I wonder sometimes if women are worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, the next rider will be number 145 in your program. Mickey Mulligan, riding Earthquake. There must be a way out gracefully, or ungracefully, anything. Okay, Mulligan, get aboard. Hold it, Mulligan. Okay, you proved your point. I admit you got sand. You got what it takes. Well, well, thank you, but I, excuse me now, I've got a ride. Mick, quit when you're ahead. You didn't think we'd let you ride that bronc, did you? There are three guys in the hospital already that tried to ride Earthquake. I figured you'd chicken out before now. No, I, I wouldn't chicken out. Just you... Wait and see how I ride this horse. Good boy, Mick. Go get him. Ah! Oh! Don't hurt yourself. Wait! Oh! Wait! Oh! Oh! Mulligan, wait a minute. Hey, what are you doing? Wait! Wait! Hey! Wait a minute! Hey, Mick, come back! I just thought of something. Freddy, where's Michael? He went that way. <laughs> Oh, Michael, Michael! 
Believe me, pal, I tried to stop him. I'll bet you did. Try him, Mickey! Joe, do you realize that's our son out there? I sure do! Come on, son, run! Right. Right. Wait a minute! Listen! Whoa! Hear it! Hey, why doesn't he use the saddle once in a while? He don't need a saddle! Off because of that fence. Hey, Mick, look out for the fence. Mickey! Look right through the fence, horse and all. Attention, all riders. Take after that horse that went through the fence. Michael, Ladies Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay in your seats. Everything's going to be all right. The cow hands are going after that runaway horse and rider. I never saw that before. Right through the fence. Oh, Mulligan. Now, darling, everybody in town's out looking for him. It's only a matter of time. Looking for over an hour. How can a boy on a bucking horse get lost? For the last time anybody saw them, the horse wasn't bucking. He was running like a scared jackrabbit headed for the open prairie. Nobody could catch him. Joe, I'll never forgive myself if anything happens to Michael. Now, look, dear, let's go in and have a cold drink. Pat and Freddie are out with the parson. and they promise to send word as soon as they heard anything. Come on. Don't have to worry about Michael. Joe! <laughs> Say, uh, would you give uh, Earthquake another shot, huh? Hey. You see Earthquake, if you learn to get along with people and you weren't so ornery, you'd have a lot more fun. <laughs> Here's mud in your eye. I told you. A stranger like the drifting sand came drifting into town. His hat was black, his shirt was black, and his boots were black and brown. Jack Miller, the killer, must be found. A man who played the robot at wheel at love, he often lied. He carried with him many things, a six-gun by his side. Jack Miller, the killer must be found. The stage was late arriving from a town called Sandy Gall. It had no driver, had no gold, it had no one at all. Jack Miller, the killer must be found. A bank was robbed, a boy was blamed, the rope hung from a tree. And through the brush, two guilty eyes said, kid, you'll swing for me. Jack Miller, the killer must be found. Jack Miller. Jack Miller. Jack Miller. I wonder where Pat can be. I'm on time and so is the man in the moon. Isn't that right, man in the moon? That's right, partner. I'm not really the man in the moon, but I've got some awfully good news for you. Check. Howdy. I'm sorry I'm late, Mickey. I had to give Rusty back his saddle pin. Poor Rusty. Can you imagine him winning the bronc contest and, and losing his gal? Well, now that you've won the girl, aren't you going to kiss her? That's what makes a happy ending. Shucks, ma'am. I, I mean, ma'am, I, I couldn't be doing that, ma'am. My horse might get jealous. Well, here's where I make a lot of horses jealous. <laughs> well, you were changing the code of the West. Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. Howdy, partners. That was the message from the folks who bring you the roundup next week. And now, before I ride off into the sunset, I... well, here comes Earthquake. I wonder how he got loose. I'll bring him back.